today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. God never forgets a seed sown. Never forgets a seed sown. Don't your neighbor say, God never forgets a seed sown. So why would you forget it? That harvest is crying for you. preaching up in Illinois a number of years ago, and uh, uh, the, the full gospel of businessmen regional convention, I was one of the speakers there, and, and one of the, the uh, officers in that ch chapter was a farmer. He had hundreds of acres, and I'm preaching on the hundred volt, and he got me after he said, now, Brother Jerry, sometimes we farmers can only hope for 30 fold. And that's a good crop. I said, well, yeah, 30 fold's good. But why, why aren't you believing for 60 fold? Well, you know, sometimes 30 fold's the best we can do. I said, has anybody ever got more than 30 fold? Well, not very often. But somebody has. Yeah, somebody got 60 fold. I said, well, why aren't you getting 60 fold? He said, well, 30 fold is the best we can do. I said, well, then you're the one limiting the harvest. Don't put limitations on the harvest. Don't settle for 30 fold, even though 30 fold is good. 30 times what you sowed, that's a good return. But why put limitations on it? If Jesus said, potentially 100 fold. Look at your neighbor and say, I want 100 volt. <laughs> what could you do right now? What could you do right now if a 100 volt harvest came to you from all the seeds you've sown? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We could, we could finance the gospel around the world and not even dent our reserves. Amen? Amen. Now, in the early days of mine and Carolyn's walk with the Lord, we didn't have any choice. We had to believe for a hundredfold because we didn't have much. And, and we'd sow just a little bit that we had. And if, if God matched us dollar for dollar, that wouldn't help us at all. We had to believe for a hundredfold. Amen. Because I was in debt up to here, like Charles Capps used to say. I was so deep in debt, I couldn't even pay attention. You know? <laughs> and, and that's the way we were. And so when we would give, we, we'd give. I mean, we didn't have any problem giving, but it wasn't much we had to give. And, you know, sometimes they'd bring in a missionary and they'd want to buy him a new van for the mission field or something, and all we could do is a couple of dollars. But we were believing for the hundredfold because Jesus said it. And see, I, I, I have never been religious. My background is sinner. <laughs> Don't look at me so holy. So was your background sinner. No, what I mean is, I, I didn't grow up in a religious atmosphere. I didn't know the, I knew John 3, 16. Heard that as a little boy. That was about all I knew the Bible said, okay? So when I finally surrendered my life to the Lord, I approached the Word of God with this attitude. God, if you didn't mean what you said right here, tell me then I won't bother, bother with it anymore. And he's never said, I didn't mean what I said. Amen. Amen. So I take it literally. Amen. Everybody say, hundredfold. Hundred that represents maximum, the highest level attainable. Amen. Now, let me share this with you. Uh, as I was praying about this, and the Lord said, this is your word for 2023. You tell people, wherever I send you, to get ready 
for 2023 being a year of the maximum and a year for the highest level attainable. And tell them to mix their faith with it now. Begin saying it. That's how you mix your faith with it, is say it. Jesus said, whosoever shall say, amen. You shall have what you say. There's power in your words. You know this. Don't go around saying, well, that's not likely to happen to me. Shut up. If you, if you can't talk the word, go buy a roll of masking tape and tape your mouth closed <clears throat> until you can talk the word. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Now, God gives us a prophetic word to raise our expectations. Amen. 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 That's, that's what it did to me. The first time I heard him say that on October the 5th, and, and you've been to my home, you've been to my third floor up there where I go visit God. That's my prayer room. Not the only place I pray, but it's one of my favorite places. And I go up there in October and, and I wait until I hear the word of the Lord. And the moment I hear it, my expectations go to another level. The moment I heard this, the year of the maximum, the year of the highest level attainable. I wrote it down. And then I started studying it. And now I'm preaching it here for the first time. Praise God. Amen. Now, the Bible says, the Bible says from the psalmist, Psalm 62, 5, my soul, wait thou only upon God for my expectation is from him. I have a right to expect this to come to pass because it came from him. My expectation is from him. I'm expecting from this moment forward hundredfold return on every seed I sow. I just sowed a large seed into Brother Coburn's uh, Victory Channel. I just sowed a large seed into uh, a pastor friend of mine out in California's in a building probe. I just sowed, the Bible says in Proverbs 11, he that scattereth increaseth Scattereth means distributing everywhere you have an opportunity, praise God. So this is not the first seed I've sown since I received this prophetic word. I, I'm diving in. I'm diving head first. I'm sowing seed everywhere I can sow seed. Why? Because this is my year for the maximum. This is my year for the highest level attainable. Come on, give the Lord a good shout of praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Highest level attainable. Colossians chapter 1 verse 10 says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Being fruitful in every good work. That's the same as highest level attainable. When we're fruitful in every good work, it brings glory to God. Jesus said in John 15, 8, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Bearing much fruit, reaching the highest level attainable, brings glory to God. Why? Because you couldn't make it happen yourself. Deuteronomy chapter 8 says, Remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee the power to get wealth. And when you're, you're uh, obtaining maximum results and reaching the highest level attainable, then people, they know you and they know you're not capable of making that happen. So it's got to be, the glory has got to be given to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Jerry, I'm struggling with that. I don't know if I can believe that or not. Well, just sit and watch the rest of us enjoy it. That's all I can tell you. Because Jesus said, Mark 9, 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Are there any believers in the house? I said, are there any believers in the house? Hallelujah. Then all things are possible to him that believeth. So don't wait until 2023 comes. Get a jump start on the year. Amen. 
Get all the seed in the ground that you possibly can. Look for opportunities to sow. My wife and I get up in the morning and say, Lord, your word says in Galatians that we are uh, mindful to be a blessing. Look, we give us opportunities today where we can sow, where we can be a blessing. Amen. Amen. And particularly in this time when this word of the Lord is, it's time for maximum results. Amen. Highest level attainable. Don't give up on your harvest. Don't ever give up on your harvest. You might have given up on it and you might have forgotten about it, but God never did. Go with me to Psalm 20 real quick. Psalm 20 real quick. Got to give you a verse here. God never forgets the seed sown. Verse one, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings. The Lord said to me years ago, right in the margin of your Bible, God never forgets the seed sown. Notice here, he remembers all your offerings. Remembers all your offerings. Jesse DePlantis and I were holding a meeting together in Augusta, Georgia a few years ago. We'd rented the auditorium there. And uh, we, we, we checked in the hotel and we, we went in a day early because Jesse and I hadn't seen each other in a few weeks, so we wanted to spend some time in fellowship and prayer before we got into that meeting. So we got checked in the hotel, and, and Jesse and Kathy and Carol and I, we, we walked out of the hotel, and it was on the river walk there in Augusta. And so uh, we were looking for a place to, to have lunch. So we walked down the steps and went on the walkway by the river. And we'd asked some people that, we're coming the other direction. Can you recommend a good restaurant up here? Oh, yeah. So they told us about a restaurant. So we went in and had a, a nice meal together. Then we were walking back, and we we're going to go back to the hotel. So we're, Jesse and I are walking along there, and then Carolyn and Kathy were behind us, and they were talking about something. And Jesse and I were talking about something. And then Jesse went back to say something to Kathy, and I kept walking assuming that Jesse would catch up with me. So I got back to the steps that went up to the parking lot, turned around and looked, and Jesse was still back there with Carolyn and Kathy. So I went on up the steps to wait for them, and when I got to the top of the steps, and this is the parking lot and the hotel's right here. When I got to the top of those steps, this little girl come running across that parking lot and just threw herself in the middle, wrapped her arms around my legs, crying, uncontrollably. And then she said, Brother Jerry, Brother Jerry, God told me this would happen. Brother, God told me this would happen. And I, I pushed her back a little bit. I said, who are you, sweetheart? She said, my mama brought me and my brothers all the way from Boston to hear you and Brother Jesse. And our car has broken down several times and it broke down again out here on the road and said, Mama's crying. She spent all the money trying to keep this car running to get us down here to see you and Brother Jesse. And, and she said, and I told Mama, said, Mama, let's pray God will send us Brother Jerry. He used to work on cars. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mama told her, said, sweetheart, it's not likely he brought his tools with him. He's going to be preaching this week. But mama, you said what things soever we desire when we pray, believe we receive them. She said, sweetheart, I don't want you to get your hopes up because it's not likely we'll see brother Jerry. And he certainly didn't bring his tools and it's not likely he can work on our car while he's here. She said, well, I'm praying anyway. <laughs> and she just prayed that God would send her brother Jerry. Mama laid her head on the steering wheel and, and, and just began crying. And, and said, Lord, I've spent every dime I have. And, and we don't have any money to stay anywhere. We don't have money to eat on. We spend every dime on this car. Well, about that time, I come up on those steps. Got on that parking lot. That little girl saw me, and she jumped out of that car and come running toward me. And Mama don't even know she's left the car yet. <laughs> and she, the little girl's telling me this story. So I said, let's go see Mama. So we walked over there. Mama's just a crying. Two little boys in the back seat crying. Mama's got the whole gang crying. 
and I tapped her on the, on the shoulder. I said, hi, mama. She looked up and said, I don't believe it. I said, your daughter did. <laughs> I said, how can I help you? She said, oh, brother Jerry. And she started telling me the story that the daughter said. I said, don't worry. I said, now, I don't, I don't even know where Jesse and Kathy are uh, and Carolyn. As far as I, I know, they're still down there talking. So uh, I'm saying, I said to the mother, <clears throat> don't worry. I'm going to take care of your car, okay? I have friends here in Augusta, and I'll have one of my associates call them and ask them about a shop that can repair your car. And don't worry about it. I'm going to pay for it, okay? She said, oh, Brother Jerry, we don't expect you to do that. I said, no, I want to pay for it. Your little girl has, has been believing God, and I'm not going to distract her, and, and I'm not going to uh, dishonor her faith. I said, for, nothing, nothing, for no other reason, I'm honoring her faith. I said, so I'm going to pay for the repairs. At that time, somebody tapped me on the shoulder, and it's Jesse. He said, you're not getting all that harvest. I'm going to pay half of it. <laughs> I said, well, Mama, Jesse and I are going to split the cost. I said, now, where are you folks staying? They said, well, we don't have any place to stay. We don't have any money to stay anywhere. I said, well, this is the headquarters hotel for this meeting. This is where Jesse and I are staying. I said, I'll get my associate to get you a room, and I'm going to pay for it. You're going to be our guest this week, and I'm paying for it. Jesse tapped me on his shoulder and said, you're not getting all that harvest. I'm paying half of it. I said, Mama, Jesse going to pay half of it. I said, now, kids, they'd never stayed in a hotel before. I said, now, kids, when you get to the room, there'll be a menu that you can order from. Order anything you want all this week and just sign your name, and, and, and it'll go on the bill and I will pay for it. Jesse said, you're not getting all that harvest. I'm going to pay half of it. <laughs> Those kids were beside themselves. I said, now, uh, since your car is going to be being repaired, I'm going to arrange for you to be driven over to the meeting, and you're going to have front row seats, and we're going to treat you like royalty this week. Okay? So... Now, we did that. We, we did that. And I had my daughter, Terry, with me. And I said, now, Terry, at the end of the meeting, I said, you get their names and get their phone number and you check on them and make sure they got back to Boston safely. Okay? And I said, now, and they got Terry's number. I said, Mama, if you have any more trouble, call Terry and we'll wire you the money or something. We want to get you back home safely. Okay? So I didn't say to the Lord, and Jesse didn't say to the Lord, now, God, we just sowed all this seed. It, the harvest never even crossed my mind. I'm doing it out of the goodness of my heart. Okay? I mean, I'm, I'm that kind of man. I, don't, I, I, I do things for people. Okay? And I didn't ask for a return. And so we get home. Jesse goes to New Orleans. I go to Fort Worth. And a couple of days later... I'm in uh, one of my partner meetings there in Fort Worth. And at the end of the service, I told the people, I'm sorry, I won't be able to stick around and, and fellowship with you, shake hands with you. I've got to make a call to our director uh, in one of our African nations. And, and I promised him I'd call him just as soon as I got out of this meeting because the time zone's different, you know. And I said, I'll have one of my associates pray and dismiss you and I'll see you next month, okay? So I'm walking out. And I turned it over to him to pray. And I'm walking out. They had a center aisle there. And I'm walking down the center aisle. And as I'm walking by about three rows back, a man tapped me on the hand and said, Brother Jerry, read this and call me. I said, okay. So I, I just stuck it in my pocket. Then when I got outside, I put it in my Bible briefcase. And I made my call. And I was on the phone with him for about an hour. And then I went home. Now, Carolyn is up at Mac and Lynn Hammond's church in Minneapolis, and she's speaking with Lynn Hammond in a, in a meeting. And so I'm home all by myself. And I thought, I looked everywhere for a honeydew list and couldn't find one. I thought, hallelujah. I'm going to make this a motorcycle day tomorrow. So I went to bed, and by this time, it's nearly 1 o'clock in the morning. So I went to bed, and I'm an early riser. I got up about 5.30 and got showered and dressed, 
went down to make myself a cup of tea, and, I, and I'm planning on riding my motorcycle. I was going to ride down to San Antonio and have dinner with a friend of mine and maybe spend the night and then ride back the next day because Carolyn wasn't going to be back for a couple of days. So uh, I'm sitting there having a cup of tea. I thought, I didn't read that note that man gave me. So I walked in my study. I got it out of my briefcase, and, it, and I read it. Dear Brother Jerry, I know you like Corvettes. I'd like to bless you with a new one. Call me if you're interested. <laughs> I looked at my watch. It's about 6.15 in the morning. I didn't want to wake him up, so I called him at 6.30. <laughs> and he said, what took you so long? I thought you were going to call me last night. I said, I told him the story. I said, I just saw the note. He said, well, uh, how long will it take you to get to Dallas? I said, well, normally about an hour, but I think I can be there in about 40 minutes. <laughs> he said, well, uh, and he owned a car dealership. He said, we've got several new Corvettes on the floor, and I just want you to come and pick out one. Okay? And he said, uh, when I got there, I, I drove a Suburban over there, and, and when I got there, he said, now I've already picked out one that I thought you would like, but I want to see if it's the same one you pick out. So I walked around, all of them looked, sat in them, all that, and I finally picked out one. He said, that's the very one I picked out for you. He said, let's go do the, do the paperwork. He said, how are you going to get it home? I said, I'm driving it. He said, what are you going to do with that Suburban? I said, you driving it. <laughs> and then I'll bring you back. So we went home, and I'm sitting in this brand new Corvette. And I, I've been driving Corvette since I was 16 years old. And my first one was a 1958 model. So... I like Corvettes. <laughs> Amen. My dad was a Corvette specialist. General Motors trained him to work on Corvettes when they came out in 1953. So I've been around Corvettes all my life. Okay. So I'm, I drop him back off in Dallas, and I'm coming home. And I'm just sitting here just praising God, you know, and enjoying this beautiful brand new Corvette. And by the way, it wasn't that I needed a new Corvette. I already had some. I already had some Corvettes. Now, that's where I lose a lot of people. Well, why'd God give you another Corvette if you already had one? Because I'm his favorite child, that's why. <laughs> he took a liking to me a long time ago, and he just blesses me all the time. Hallelujah. And so... I'm driving it home, and I'm just rejoicing. And then suddenly I said, Lord, why did you give me this Corvette? Why did you speak to that man to give me this Corvette? He said, that's from the seed you sown in that family in Augusta. I said, Lord, I didn't ask you for a harvest. He said, I never forget a seed sown. I never forget a seed sown. He said, this is, this is part of your harvest. Enjoy it. Well, man, I got on the phone right there and I called Jesse. I said, Jesse. And I told him what the Lord had just done for me. I'm in it right now. I said, Has anything unusual happened to you in the last 24 hours? He said, I just about to call you. He said, There's a man drove by my house and he saw me out on the balcony and he hollered, Jesse! And he threw a paper bag over my fence, landed in my yard, and it's full of money. I said, well, did the Lord say anything to you about it? He said, yeah. He said, Jesse, that's the harvest on that seed you sowed in that family in Augusta. I said, Jesse, God never forgets a seed sown. Never forgets a seed sown. Don't your neighbor say, God never forgets a seed sown. So why would you forget it? That harvest is crying for you. After tonight, just walk around like this. Is that you, Harvest? Is that my harvest crying? Did you know that your harvest is crying out for you? What could you do right now if you received a hundredfold return on every financial seed you've ever sown? Today's special offer, the Maximum Level Package. 
contains Jerry Savelle's brand new prophetic message, 2023, the year of the maximum, the highest level attainable, and his revealing book, Principles of Supernatural Increase. Every seed you've sown is meant to produce a harvest. That harvest wants to be in your hands. In this package, Jerry teaches how to increase supernaturally, how to believe for a hundredfold return, how to grow to a higher level of faith, and the two cries of the harvest. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Maximum Level Special Package. Discover how to walk in a new season of Maximum Harvest. Average and mediocre doesn't have to be the norm. Order now and move into the Maximum Level this year. Listen, if you enjoyed today's message, be sure to join me again next week as we continue this study on the prophetic word that the Lord has given me for 2023, maximum results, the highest level attainable. Let me read something to you that Jesus said in the 15th chapter of John in verse 8. He said, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Bearing much fruit means that you uh, reach the highest level attainable. And notice it pleases God when you do so. So how many of you want to please God? I certainly do. So reaching maximum results and the highest level attainable is one of the ways that we bring glory to God. Not only that, but it makes God look attractive to the people who are looking at us. When you are experiencing maximum results, people are going to notice and they'll be asking, how are you doing this? And you'll be able to tell them it's the God you serve. So I want to encourage you, determine right now, make a quality decision that you're not going to settle for anything less than God's best. Amen. 2023, the year for maximum and the year for the highest level attainable. That's the, the title of our new CD series, 2023, the year of the maximum and the year of the highest level attainable. Three CDs that will take you into a rich study that I know you will enjoy. And I believe once you listen to it all the way through, you're going to turn around and listen to it again and again and again. Right along with it, my book entitled Principles of Supernatural Increase. If you're going to experience maximum results, then I assure you, you're going to experience right along with it, supernatural increase. These items are available to you. If you'll just contact our uh, ministry, Go to our website, jerrysavelle.org, or you can look on the screen right now and all the ordering information is there and it's available to you. So let me encourage you to place your order uh, right away so that we can send it to you and you can get these in your home and begin to read and to listen. And I'm telling you, I know your faith is going to go to another level. And speaking of faith, you remember this, the Bible tells us that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Your faith will overcome the world. I'll see you next week.